Hello everyone, FPL Raptor here and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. In today's video we have my Game Week 27 team selection and we now have the start of what is three very important weeks in FPL. Double Game Week 27, Blank Game Week 28 and Double Game Week 29 and I will in this video be discussing how I plan on navigating that with my current team. If you are enjoying the content here on this channel please do remember to like, comment and subscribe but without further ado let's jump into it. So let's waste no time at all today and jump straight into the team for game week 27. So I, of course, did wildcard in game week 26. It didn't go particularly well for me, but we're going to move on quickly from that. Listen, yes, my team would have done better if I hadn't wildcarded. But as I always say, you need to judge the decision based on the decision making process and not the outcome, because we're trying to predict the future in FPL and we're not going to be able to do that. And sometimes even if you make a perfect decision on paper, it will backfire and sometimes it can backfire pretty poorly. And that's what happened in game week 26 for us. So do I think the game week 26 wildcard made sense? Absolutely. And I still maintain that. It was just one of those freak results because if you remove the Liverpool Man United game, and let's say that goes a different way, the way that we probably predicted it to go, which is Liverpool to struggle and Man United to win, all of a sudden, yes, it still wasn't a fantastic wildcard, but it probably wasn't much worse than not wildcarding. So one freak result shouldn't change how you assess whether it was a good decision or not. I still think it made sense on paper. But again, if you didn't wildcard and you kept Salah, you're probably laughing. But let's move on to game week 27 and forget all about last week. Throughout this video, I'm going to try and answer some of the key questions around different players in different positions, even if it's not necessarily relevant to my team. Hopefully, it will help you with your decisions for your team, as well as knowing what I'm planning for this week. So because I wildcarded last week, the team is in decent position, but I did get a little bit aggressive in game week 26, I guess you could say. And I have actually booked in a transfer for 27, which you'll see here. So I am actually making a transfer this week, even though I wildcarded last week, which probably wasn't the best idea, but we're just going to roll with it. So looking at my defense, it looks very similar to a lot of game week 26 wildcards. And again, even if you're wildcarding in 27, if you're wildcarding this week, let me know down below in the comments. You may well have a very similar defense too. So I have Raya and Henry. I don't mind the double up on the Brentford defense this week. I think the fixtures are okay from a defensive perspective, which is one of the reasons I did it. I'm not a massive fan of it for game week 27, uh, for game week 29, I should say. And that's the week that I'm bench boosting. So I will need both of them. So there is the potential to maybe sell Henry in game week 29 if some of the other transfers fall through. And if it lines up okay, then maybe because I really don't particularly like their double in 29. But this week, I really like it. And I think, again, if you are on a 27 wildcard, you can definitely still justify a double up on the Brentford defense. If you are on a wildcard, or maybe you're making transfers this week as opposed to having wildcarded last week. I still like Henry, Pinnock, and me, and even Hickey to some extent. I don't mind any of the Brentford back line. I think that Henry still has some of the best data over the last six. His expected goal involvement is pretty good. But me and Pinnock are going to goal threats. Henry's more likely to get you an assist. Me and Pinnock are more likely to get you goals. So, like I said, realistically, go for any of them. If you think that Pinnock's not going to score again because he just scored, then maybe go for me. I'm still happy with my Henry choice. And again, these are some things in hindsight you could go, I should have gone for me or Pinnock. But realistically, there's nothing much to split them. And I still think that right now. So I'm happy having Henry, happy having Raya. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, for one clean sheet at least. And then maybe bonus points for Henry and maybe a couple of saves for Raya in both games. So fingers crossed, those two can pull through. And then the third double game week defender that I've got is Esther Pinyam. Estepinian is a tricky one because if you don't go for Estepinian, you can actually go for a triple up on the Brighton attack, which looks really, really promising at the moment. The other issue we've got with Estepinian is there's an international break between Game Week 28 and Game Week 29. Estepinian plays in Australia three days before Brighton's game in Game Week 29. So there is a chance that Esther Pinyan does miss that game or gets reduced minutes in that game because he's going to be flying back only a couple of a couple of days before that game starts. I still think Esther Pinyan's a great option. If I were wildcarding in 27, though, or I had the option to do this, I would be very, very tempted by March, McAllister and Matoma and tripling up on that Brighton attack. They are creating chances for fun. Their XG at the moment is absolutely ridiculous. And under De Zerbi, they're just scoring goals. But I do like the fact Esther Pinyan is quite attacking himself. He also is good for clean sheets and he's very good for bonus points too. So I'm happy having him. I might have gone for a triple up on the Brighton attack though if I wildcarded this week. So those are the double game week defenders and the single game week defenders are Trippier, Zinchenko and Botman. All three of them you'd realistically like to start in any other week. But of course, our teams are absolutely stacked for this week. So Botman's never going to start above Trippier for me. Trippier's just got greater goal threat, greater bonus points, greater everything to be honest. So I'm going to be starting Trippier this week. Cue a Botman goal now and I regret saying that. It's between Trippier and Zinchenko for a lot of people, or Zin Trippier and an Arsenal defender. 
I think the thing that really sways me towards Trippier is, is three things, really. But the main thing is the home fixture. But he does also have better data than the likes of Gabriel and Zinchenko. And also, he's on, he's on set pieces, too. So he has more routes to goal, not only from open play, but also from set pieces. So I like Trippier for all of those reasons. And I've not really considered starting Zinchenko ahead of Trippier. I will discuss the bench boost now because we've just talked about two of the players on the bench. There is loads of value to a Game Week 27 bench boost. The main thing being that there is no international break before it and we know what our teams currently look like. Most of us will have 15 fit players that we are happy playing for this week. Even if, like, for example, Madison, he's absolutely fine for this week. So there is a lot of value because we know all of our players are fit or we think they are anyway. And there's not a big gap in between when we've wildcarded and when we're bench boosting. My major issue with a bench boost in 27 is for my specific team, unless I sell Madison, which I don't particularly want to, or unless I sell Kepa, which doesn't make a lot of sense for me, I've got Kepa and Madison clashing against each other. I think Zinchenko is fine, but it is a way against Fulham, and Fulham are very good at Craven Cottage. So I think Kepa and Madison are both unlikely to both get me points. Zinchenko, I think there is a reasonable chance that he concedes there. And then Botman, you're probably looking at a six-point ceiling, maybe seven or eight if he's lucky. So... I do think that this bench will probably get me around 10 to 15 points. I just think that the ceiling is higher in game at 29 because I'll have more fixtures and better players. I've got the likes of Kane on my bench boost. I've got a double game week goalkeeper as well. I've got better defenders with higher upside. So when I look at my 29 bench boost, it just has a higher ceiling. But the big issue is, like I said, there is an international break between 28 and 29. And game at 29 is still a few weeks away. So anything could happen. If we get loads of injuries, postponements, issues, it could be that the bench boost just isn't viable in 29 anymore. But for those reasons, I'm currently planning on, on bench boosting in 29 as opposed to 27. The final thing I wanted to discuss around the defense before we move on to my midfield and attack is just around Sanchez. If you own Sanchez, what should you be doing? I think unless you're planning a bench boost 27, I would probably just wait. I know that means that if you've got, for example, Sanchez and another keeper, you might have to start a slightly suboptimal keeper this week. But most of the other keepers have decent fixtures. I know that that also means that you can only have two Brighton double game week players and you don't get that third Brighton double game week player. I just think that it makes sense to wait because if you do Sanchez to Steele and Steele actually has a couple of poor games, Sanchez could quite easily come back in. I don't think that will happen very soon, but I think that is a possibility. And I think you just want to eye up what other keepers are doing well. If you do want to replace Sanchez this week and you don't want to go for Steel, I think someone like a Kalor Navas could be really nice or just go for Kepa if you don't already have Kepa because he plays in 28, he doubles in 29 and I just think that the Chelsea defence look okay at the moment. They're not fantastic but he makes a lot of saves and he's good for bonus points. We know how good Kepa can be in FPL. So I probably wouldn't replace Sanchez this week unless you're planning a bench boost. If you are planning a bench boost, I would probably go for Steel because I think he'll play both in game at 27. It's just long term... Can you rely on still to keep getting minutes? You could, for example, do like Sanchez to Navas or some other goalkeeper, and that would allow you to bring in another Brighton midfielder, for example. I don't dislike that. I just feel like it's a lot of transfers when you've just wildcarded, and maybe the best course of action is to wait, assess the information, and see who you fancy bringing in for a Game Week 29 bench boost. So it really is team-dependent. If you own Sanchez, let me know what you're currently doing down below. That's the defense. Let's move on to the midfield. So moving on to the midfield, I haven't actually made the transfer yet, but as you can see, that sort of weird mutation that I've tried making so that you understand what I'm currently planning with my team of March slash McAllister. At the moment, in that spot, I've got Martinelli. Now, the reasoning behind not going for three Brighton assets was twofold. I wanted to attack game at 26, and I thought both Madison and Martinelli would be very good options. Obviously, both of them ended up blanking, so they weren't. And I regret that now, of course, but that is a little bit of hindsight. I'm still glad that I went for the slightly aggressive move. I think Madison was very unlucky not to get any returns. Martinelli just wasn't great. But the plan was also always to sell Martinelli in 27 for one of the other Brighton midfielders. The issue that I've got is I think that March and McAllister are both excellent, and I think they're arguably both better than Matoma. So I kind of regret going for Matoma as the one Brighton asset that I started with. Again, if you didn't see that video, the reason that I went with Matoma from the off is because I already had 0.1 million tied up in him, and a second prize rise looked, prize rise looked imminent, which it was. So Matoma's already gone up 0.2 million. So that was kind of the reason. Again, I probably shouldn't have let price changes affect my decision making that much, that much. But I don't think Matoma's a bad choice at all. I think Matoma's excellent. I just think I slightly prefer both March and McAllister. But I can only bring one in this week. Now, I'm not going to discuss it in too much detail here because in the section after I go through my team, I'm going to discuss March, McAllister, Matoma, and Bermo and Tony, the five attackers that you might want to bring in from Brighton and Brentford. I'm going to discuss them in detail around which players you should look to bring in and also which players you should look to captain. So at the moment, I'll just say that in that spot, it's going to be one of March and McAllister, March or McAllister. 
And I'll probably end up captaining whoever I bring in. But it is very close between March McAllister and then also Tony. And I still think, like I said, Matoma is a great option too. So I've got Matoma. I'll have another Brighton midfielder in that slot. Then I have Saka and Rashford. There's not a lot to say about these two. They're absolutely excellent. Manchester United are struggling a little bit lately, especially after that, obviously, 7-0 humiliation. I still think Rashford's a great option. His data is still very strong, and I don't think we should overreact too much. But in the last few weeks, we have just seen a little bit less from Manchester United. So let's keep an eye on it. Obviously, they blank in game week 28, but it's a pretty nice double in 29 and then decent fixtures after that. So I've got no intention of selling Rashford now, but it is something that I'm keeping my eye on. And I wouldn't mind moving off him if we start to see a real downturn in both Rashford and Manchester United's form. But I'm not rushing that transfer. Southampton at home is a decent fixture and Saka is just absolutely excellent. I may sell Saka in game week 29. If I really want to attack the double game, for example, Saka to Bruno Fernandes is something that I'm considering. But for 27 and 28, obviously Arsenal have a fixture in 28 against Palace. I have no intention of selling Saka this week or next week. So the midfield kind of makes sense. The only thing that I could potentially consider doing instead is rather than selling Martinelli, I could sell Madison instead. But for me, I just don't see any reason to do that. Madison and Martinelli both have a decent fixture in game week 28. I think it's probably an equally difficult fixture for both. But then Madison has a really nice double in 29. And considering I don't need to play the player this week, they're going to be on my bench. I think I'd rather bench Madison, have him for a really decent fixture in 28, and then a lovely double in 29. So at the moment, I'm favoring selling Martinelli ahead of Madison. That will be my midfield four with one of March or McAllister. Let's take a look at the three forwards and then discuss all of these attackers in detail and have an in-depth discussion around captaincy. So moving on to the three forwards, I'm pretty happy with them for this week, but all three of them in the coming weeks at some point could potentially be sold, especially Haaland and Tony, but that doesn't need to be done right now. I know a lot of people are in a tricky position where they want to bring in Tony, but because they're in a 3-5-2 or potentially they've got another striker that they want to keep like Watkins, they've got to sell one of Haaland or Kane to bring Tony in. That's a tricky decision to make. I would lean towards saying I would sell Haaland instead of Kane. Haaland's got the better data. I think he's the better FPL option as well. But you're probably not planning on captain Haaland anytime soon. And he obviously doesn't have a fixture in 28. And he's got a more difficult fixture in 29 than Kane. So for me, if you, you have to sell one of Haaland and Kane... I would probably end up selling Haaland instead of Kane. But I think that's a very tricky decision to make. I probably wouldn't want to sell either... I am definitely looking, which I'll discuss in the final section, at maybe selling Kane in game week 28 for one of Watkins, Felix, or Brennan Johnson. I know that sounds crazy, but again, no fixture in 28 and no double in 29. If you bring in someone like Watkins, Ian Acho, Felix, Brennan Johnson, you're getting three fixtures for Haaland's one. And then you can bring Haaland in for Tony in game week 30. When Tony's fixtures start to go downhill, he's going to have his hearing for the betting ban. And he's also probably at that stage going to be very close, if not already have the 10 game, the 10 yellow card, two game suspension. So I feel like the, the Haaland hokey cokey makes sense, but I don't need to worry about that this week. The only other thing to discuss is around, is Tony the best captaincy option? As you can see at the moment, I've probably not got my armband on him, but I'll discuss the data around that in the next section. So this is the team. I'm not going to take a hit this week. I don't need to. There's justification to not use the transfer at all to keep, because obviously the one, the Brighton asset blanks in game at 28. So I could just keep Martinelli against Fulham away, start him this week or Madison against Chelsea at home. And then in 28, I've got an extra player. But then I'm probably going to want to take Martinelli out in game week 29 anyway, because Arsenal don't have a double. So if I'm not taking out Martinelli this week, I would do it in 29 anyway. So I feel like it makes sense to just attack the double this week and bring in a Brighton midfielder. So that's the current plan. That's the current team. Let me know what you think of it down below in the comments. And now let's have a bit of a discussion around the double game week attackers and who the best captaincy option is. So I did discuss these players in detail in the game week preview video. If you've not yet seen that, I live streamed for about an hour earlier on in the week where I talked about the Brighton and Brentford assets. I talked about captaincy. So if you want a more in-depth discussion, that was about an hour long. Go back on my channel. It was uh, released a few days ago as a live stream. So I'm only going to discuss this relatively briefly, but I think it's important because people will be looking to either bring in these assets this week with transfers, or they'll be thinking between probably March, McAllister, Matoma, and Tony, those four assets, who should I captain this week? So I said that I don't particularly like Ferguson as an option just because of his expected minutes with Welbeck hanging around and at the moment Welbeck's fit. I don't think Ferguson will start every game and even if he starts, he's going to get an early sub. So whilst the data doesn't look bad per 90 there... He's going to very rarely get 90 minutes for you. So for that reason, I prefer the three Brighton midfielders plus Esther Pinyan. When we look at the three Brighton midfielders, it comes down to what you value most. I think March McAllister and Matoma are all very nailed. 
I think that March is arguably the least nailed. Because I think when Brighton are winning quite comfortably, Matoma seems to stay on the pitch regardless. And McAllister does to some extent too. Whereas when Brighton are three or four up, it seems to be Solly March that comes off first. But when they are chasing a result, I think all three are likely to stay on the pitch. So I think March is probably the least nailed, but I think they're all relatively nailed there. So that's not necessarily an issue for any of them. If you value penalties, which is incredibly important in a player, because if they're on penalties, again, they don't have to play well. All of a sudden, from midfielder on penalties, they can come away with a 10 or 11 pointer with clean sheet and full bonus. So McAllister being on penalties is absolutely massive. I've got non-penalty data here, but he is on penalties. So if you really value penalties, McAllister's probably your man. If you value... I test, Matoma is probably your guy to go for because he's such an exciting player. His dribbling's excellent. He's so fast. And so far this season and in recent weeks, he converts the few chances he gets. And I say the few chances. It's not terrible, but in recent weeks, he's not got many chances at all. As you can see, big chance involvement per 90, 0.34. Non-penalty expected goal involvement is very, very poor at 0.33 in recent weeks. Across the season, it's okay. It's average. But Maybe Matoma is a stats buster. Maybe he will continue to overperform his expected data. And when he gets chances, he'll convert them. And I have no doubt that he is an excellent footballer, but I would need to see more from Matoma to put him under the same bracket as someone like Kjongmin Son. So if you're eye test based and you don't really care about the stats and you think Matoma might be a stats buster anyway, then Matoma's probably your guy to go for. And then to finish, if you're really big into your stats and you really do care about expected data and you think the expected data is the best predictor we have of someone that will get future returns, then Solly March is quite comfortably probably the guy you want to go for. 1.3 non-penalty expected goal involvement per 90. 2.47 big chance involvement per 90 in the last few weeks. Now, across the season, he's very, very similar to Matoma. But in recent weeks, and under De Zerbi in particular, March has looked like a different animal and he's looked really, really strong. The only thing data-wise that would put me back in favour of McAllister ahead of March is whilst March's non-penalty expected goal involvement is better, McAllister actually has a significantly higher expected goals. So a lot of March's data is made up through expected assists. If you're not interested in data, what that essentially means is March is more of a creative threat, like a Kevin De Bruyne, whereas McAllister is more of a goal threat, your kind of Martinelli-esque sort of player, where they're not going to create that much, but they'll get some big chances and some decent chances to score goals. So again, it really depends what you value, and all three are fantastic. And if you can own all three... I probably would, but Matoma is more of an eye test, more, more a better player that's more likely to convert chances, I suppose, better finishing. March has the better total data and very, very creative on a lot of set pieces. McAllister has the greatest goal threat and he's on penalties. Basically, if I were choosing from scratch, I would either go for all three or I would go for what the, I would go for March and McAllister as the double up. But I do really like Matoma as well. I've already got Matoma, so I now need to choose between March and McAllister. At the moment, I'm probably leaning towards Solly March. The reason for that is I just think he's got so many routes to points. And I think he's been a little bit unlucky in recent weeks not to get slightly more returns. So at the moment, I'm just leaning March, but I could quite easily bring him a Callister. It's those penalties that's just swinging it in favor of him if I do go for him. So that's the Brighton midfielders. Hopefully that helps you to make some of your decisions. And then Mbermo and Tony. I've got Mbermo just, if you can't afford Tony, look at his data. It's actually quite good for Mbermo at 0.65 non-penalty expected goal involvement. But Tony's the guy to go for because he has penalties. He's completely nailed. And I just think he has a higher ceiling than Mbermo as well. For captaincy... As you can tell, I, I slightly prefer March and McAllister to Matoma. When it comes to March, McAllister, Matoma versus Tony, I don't think there's a lot to split them. Of course, the, the benefit of captaining either McAllister or Tony is that you're captaining a penalty taker. When you're trying to choose between the Brighton and Brentford fixtures, I don't think there's a lot there either. Again, look at if you look at the expected goals conceded ranks, you would say that probably the better fixtures on paper are for Brighton. 14th and 18th worst defences in the league for Leeds and Palace. Whereas for Everton and Southampton, we're talking 15th and 5th. And I had to triple check this. Southampton are the 5th best defence in the league, according to expected goals conceded post-World Cup. So maybe Southampton aren't the poor defence that we think they are. And maybe under new management as well, we might see a slight increase in their defensive data. And they might actually be an okay defence. We'll have to wait and see over a bigger sample. But that's something to think about. And also, Brentford aren't great away from home. They've struggled to score goals this season away from home. So as you can tell by the entirety of this video... I'm probably leaning a Brighton midfielder ahead of Tony at the moment. But I feel like Tony is the safe option. Across the entirety of this season, he's put up very, very consistent data. He's on penalties, and not only is he on penalties, but he's excellent. 
And also, he's their talisman. And if Brentford score goals, Tony will probably be involved in them. But at the moment, March and McAllister are my favourite two. Then Tony, then Matoma. Please let me know down below who you're currently planning on transferring in this week. Who are you planning on captaining? In the final section, I'm just going to very briefly show you my plans for Game Week 28 and Game Week 29, just so you can see how my team's shaping up for these weeks. So as I said, in this final section, a little bit more chilled and relaxed, I'm just going to go through what my team looks like for 28 and 29 and show you what I'm currently planning transfer-wise. So let's say I bring in March. It doesn't really matter budget-wise if it's March or McAllister. They're very close in price. So let's just say it's March. Could be the other one, as I said. That's the way the team will look for 27. Looking very strong. Six double game week players. No major issue. Obviously, ignore captaincy. We'll sort that out after. For game week 28... I'm currently on nine players. So I've got my triple Brighton on the bench. I do have Raya or Kepa, but I'll probably end up starting Kepa because I think greater chance for a clean sheet there. And then in my starting 11, the two blank players are Rashford and Haaland. Obviously, all of my Brighton players have a really nice double in game week 29, and they'll have a further three doubles across the remainder of the season. So they'll double in 37, 34, and then probably game week 31 or 30. So I want to keep all three Brighton assets as a result, and I really like their double in 29 too. Rashford has a really nice double in game week 29. I may well captain Rashford in game week 29 too. That's something to think about. So I don't want to sell Rashford. That then leaves Erling Haaland. So if we take a look at his fixtures, in 28, he's got a blank. In 29, it's Liverpool. But then 30 and 31, it's Southampton and Leicester. I think you want him back in 30 and 31. So I guess the thought process here is, is it worth selling Haaland for two weeks, losing the bit of money that you've got tied up in him, and then bringing him back in to have someone else who will have three fixtures when Haaland only has one. Because like I said, if you've got a player that plays in 28 and doubles in 29, you're going to get three fixtures for Haaland's one fixture. So the three players that I'm currently eyeing up are Zhao Felix, Watkins, and Brennan Johnson. Maybe Ian Acho, but Ian Acho's finishing recently has been absolutely woeful. So I'm, I'm probably less so considering him at the moment. And I already have Madison too. So let's say... At the moment, it's probably going to be Watkins, but I am really tempted by Felix. Watkins obviously has a really nice fixture in game week 28 against Bournemouth at home, but I don't like his double as much in game week 29. So that's something to think about. But let's just say it's Ollie Watkins, for an example. And then I'll captain one of Saka or Kane. So for free, no hit required, I will have 10 players in game week 28. Let's then move on to game week 29. So I only have one free transfer in 29. I will have sorry, 12 double game week players, which is my starting 11 all double. And then I have Raya on the bench. And then my three single game week players are Kane, Saka and Zinchenko. So I think the one transfer which makes quite a lot of sense is to do Zinchenko to a double game week defender. Because I think Saka and Kane, if I had to bench boost with them, there's no real issue. There's no real issue with bench boosting with Zinchenko. But I feel like Zinchenko to a double game week defender of some kind makes a lot of sense. So at the moment, I've been thinking about probably doing Luke Shaw. So let me bring Luke Shaw in. And then Luke Shaw would be in my starting 11. And I think probably the weakest defender would be Henry. So then Henry drops to the bench. And the bench is now Raya, Kane, Saka and Henry. And remember, I am bench boosting in game week 29. I then need to think about, well, what do I want to do after that? Do I want to take a minus four or a minus eight hit? The answer is probably yes. And I am tempted to sell Saka. Now, I know a lot of people won't necessarily like that. And we can discuss that over the coming weeks, the merit in it. But in 29, he's only got a single fixture. In 30, he's got Liverpool. In 31, he's got West Ham. And whilst West Ham have been turned over quite a few times recently, their data's not bad. And I think they've been very, very unlucky to lose by the goal margins that they have in recent weeks. And then in 32, I'm planning a free hit. And then in 33, he's got City, Chelsea, Newcastle, Brighton. There are some really tricky fixtures apart from 32 when I'm probably planning on free hit anyway. So I don't feel like Saka is a must for this period. And especially if it allows me to get in another player who I really like. So at the moment, I am tempted by Saka to Bruno Fernandes for a minus four. If I do that, I still have enough money to bring Harlem back in. The other option I've got, or on top of that, is I could take out Henry for another player that has a slightly better fixture. Again, I don't really like the Brighton double in 29. So I've got those options there. Let's say I do Saka to Bruno Fernandes. And again, I might not necessarily do exactly that, but that would be the move. And then I, I would probably bench Botman. So the bench boost would end up looking something like this, where it's Raya, Kane, Botman, Henry. I, it's not a perfect bench boost, but it's nice having Kane in there. Three double game week players. You're hoping for a clean sheet, I guess, from Brentford in one of them, or at least a couple of save points for Raya. And then hopefully a clean sheet for Botman against West Ham. So there's, there's something along those lines you can do. If I don't want Bruno Fernandes, the other player that I'm considering is Jared Bowen. 
but I want to see a little bit more from West Ham over the coming weeks. Going into game week 30, the team's looking pretty strong. So if we bring Kane back in, and we'd probably end up basically just benching our triple Brighton. Right, so let's just bring in our players back in here. And I would probably want Haaland back in at this stage. And it's probably going to be for Tony. Now, you leave enough money in the bank to make sure that you can do that. So Haaland out. Um, Tony out. Sorry, Haaland back in. And I'll probably end up giving Haaland the armband. Now, I'm not going to keep going on and on and on because this is so far in the future. There's an international break in the middle. But that's generally how I'm planning on navigating the upcoming game weeks. I will have nine players for blank game week 28. And for double game week 29, I'll probably have... 12, 13, or 14 double gaming players with a very decent bench boost. So that's my current plan. Let me know down below what you are currently planning, what you think of my team. And yeah, hopefully you enjoy today's video. So guys, there you have it. That is my Game Week 27 team selection. Hopefully it's clear why I'm doing what I'm doing. And hopefully you do understand why I wildcard in 26, despite the fact that it went terribly. And hopefully the video was helpful for those of you that are trying to make some key decisions this week. If you did enjoy today's video, please do drop a like. Let's go for 2,000 likes on today's video. And make sure to subscribe as well. We are on the road to 65,000 subscribers. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. Cheers. Bye-bye.